Good evening, Jules fans. Welcome back to Jules and the Blood TV. I am returning this evening from a mid-season hiatus over the Christmas period. You will know that we only did match day lives. Um, it was a nice break. Time to be spent with the family to refresh. Uh, but back tonight. Was hoping to be back last Thursday, but got struck down by man flu, unfortunately. So for all those that were expecting more videos over the Christmas period, I do apologise. For all those that you have enjoyed the break and had your eardrums given a rest and not had to listen to myself, then unlucky, I am back. <laughs> but all jokes aside, it is great to be back. Uh, Monday review to kick off the week and it's another positive one to start off the new year um, in terms of league football. Uh, a nil-nil draw at what I will still call London Road at the weekend as we picked up a point against high-flying Peterborough. Um, yeah, and all in all, a really good performance. Probably a game that we should win based on the type of chances that we created, especially first half. I think Steve Evans is correct looking at the highlights and the match reports that I've looked at on social media and in newspapers. I think it's fair to say we should be leading at the break. Debutant Jordan Roberts, who we'll get onto in a bit more detail in a minute, hits the bar with one header, comes back out to him and he flicks it up in the air. And Brandon Hanlon has to score, and I'm a massive fan of Brandon. I think. There's a very good footballer in there that just needs nurturing and I think he will become a good player at this level for us or someone else uh, in future seasons. But there's no defending it. It's a bad miss, unfortunately. Brandon is two yards out with the whole goal to aim at and he somehow manages to hit the bar rather than put it in the back of the net. But um seems he wasn't um, poor on the whole again, though. Um, creating another couple of chances for, for other people and himself, it seems, with his positive running and his pace and his power and... Uh, forced a good save from Christy Pym, darting him from the left, dropping his shoulder and trying to bend one far corner. Uh, he was paired up front with Jordan Roberts, as I say, but we'll get on to him in a minute. Um, Posh obviously came back into its second period. They're gonna, they've are going they got too many good players to not have periods in games where they're going to be on top and they're going to fashion good goal-scoring opportunities. But um, Jack Bonham, I don't think, was overly worked. He did make two really, really good saves. One from a header, I think, was from their new signing. Um can't think of the lad's name off the top of my head. A lad they've just spent half a million on from Barnet. So that's your levels if you're thinking about budgets and stuff like that. Um, and then he made a really good double save if you if you think it was him. Um, kept out a, a Moisa drive and they managed to get up. And I think between him and Barry Fuller, they managed to get the rebound onto the crossbar in the second period. So great to see. I know Jack Bonham was rewarded with a place in the Sky Bet EFL team of the week. That covers all three divisions, not just League One. That is Championship League One and League Two. So excellent reward for Jack, who's having a fine season. Um, but yeah, like I say, we probably had the better of the chances in terms of clear-cut ones. But looking at the stats, they had more shots on target. Whether they were all really good shots or some were comfortable for Jack, obviously that's up for debate. But I know Steve Evans has said, we deserve to win and perhaps we did, but I'm not going to sit here and moan too much because it's an excellent point on the road against a very good side that spend a lot of money every transfer window. Um, and as I tweeted Sunday morning, yes, we'd love to be scoring more goals and we'd love to be more clinical in front of goal, but it's nice to be sitting here whinging that we've only drawn at Peterborough off the, off the back of the weekend rather than about this time last year, we were sat doing a Monday review after we'd been spanked at home to Walsall 3-0, courtesy of an Andy Cook hat-trick and we were absolutely awful. Uh, Teams were playing through us too easy and we were right in the middle of a relegation dogfight. So times have changed. Um, we're looking up rather than down, which is great. And obviously it is January transfer window and I'll get onto that in a little bit. Um, but just quickly to sum up um, and finish off the match on Saturday. Uh, match ratings uh, pretty consistent all over the park, according to Luke Cordell. He's given everyone a seven, aside from Jack Bonham and Brandon Hanlon. He gave Brandon just a six and Jack an eight. So... Um, and the substitute was just Alex Jakubiak and he came come on with only 11 minutes and uh, Luke didn't give him a rating. Uh, and in terms of Luke's match report, the final paragraph, which we like to have a look at every week, Jules had enough chances to win this. They deserved at least a draw, but those missed opportunities so nearly proved costly against a posh team with quality to punish. In the end, Jules were grateful for some missed chances from the host to ensure they claimed a draw. That's it. We could have won it. Perhaps we should have won it. Peterborough could have won it, perhaps should have won it. So if you're going to look at it like that, draw's probably about right. Um, and it's another point on the board. We sit four points outside the playoffs um, with pretty much half the season to go. So if we can have a good transfer window, um, then who knows? And obviously, 
Jordan Roberts, who I've already mentioned, did come in and make his full debut straight into the starting eleven on Saturday, having arrived on loan from the rest uh, for the rest of the season from Ipswich Town. Um, and I tweeted out on Saturday night that it seems he'd had a fairly promising first appearance for us. 70 mark nine minutes played, which was, was great to see, considering he's hardly played any football this season. Created one chance, which was for Brandon Hannon. He had two shots and he provided two key passes. So, um, and, and looking at all the interviews and, and reports with him since arriving, it seems that we're going to get the bare minimum out of him, which is work rate and, and willingness to run the channels and work defenders hard. So, and if he can add some goals between now and the end of the season, then excellent news. Um, but I don't think that's the end of the attacking options that may be coming through the door. Um, Steve Evans was interviewed after the game and said that an attacker, a midfielder and a centre-back who can cover at full-back is what he's hoping to get through um, the door in the January transfer window. And he says that one or two of them look to be uh, pretty close. Um, but two more that were sorted out um, since we've last done a video where I've just sat down rather than be at games, and that is Ollie Lee and Tom O'Connor have both stayed for the rest of the season on loan from Heart of Midlothian and Southampton, respectively. I think that's excellent news for the football club and us as fans because both of them players have, have played a really big part in, in what we're trying to do and what we're trying to achieve. And We've basically played the same team now for the best part of six weeks and continuity and consistency can only be a good thing. And as long as we're not picking up injuries because we don't have the biggest squad, then I think we'll be absolutely fine and we can look forward to the second part of the campaign. Um, and if we can get one, two or three new players in to add to the squad in terms of numbers and depth and quality, then, then excellent news. Um, you can't have too many good options at any level. Um, but yeah, in terms of the transfer window, um, obviously you get to see a lot of these in the no account start popping up uh, January the 1st and as soon as the season ends. Um, I think you have to take a lot of them with a, a fairly large pinch of salt because a lot of them just sort of copy and paste what the other one says. But um, the striker's the big one for us, isn't it? We all know that. We all know that we need to score more goals. We all need to take um, more of our chances when they come along. And I think if we'd done that throughout the season, we could be probably sitting in the playoffs, if you think. Um, perhaps could have beaten Peterborough. Perhaps could have beaten Ipswich on Boxing Day. Um that gives you another four points, which would put us on 38, which would be in the top six, um, or maybe just outside on goal difference. But um, in terms of the first half of the campaign, I've been very impressed. Um, I tweeted just before Christmas after one of the games that Steve Evans has won me over. Um, all we ever want is for our football team to be playing well and, and being competing in matches and winning football games. And, and Steve Evans has got us doing all of them. Um, so, yeah. I'm happy to sit here and hold my hands up. I'm a, I'm a fan now. I've, I've been converted. Um, and I'm very intrigued to see what the transfer window brings and then with that, the rest of the season. Um, because we now can just concentrate on the league because obviously since I last spoke, we were knocked out of the FA Cup by Premier League West Ham. Didn't disgrace ourselves at all. Just over a week ago on the BT Sport cameras um, with a bit of luck again and maybe a bit more cutting edge and a bit more being clinical in front of goal, we could probably have led that game at half-time as well. But it wasn't to be. We put on a really good show and we did what Steve Evans asked and that was being the game after 70 minutes. But unfortunately, most unlikely of goal scorers, Pablo Zabaleta got his first goal for West Ham, his first goal in the FA Cup after about 10 years in English football. And we then got caught in injury time, piling forward and they nicked a second through another Pablo four nails. But it was a decent performance and it was it was great to see the Priestfield absolutely bouncing from first minute to last. Absolute full house. Uh, Golden Road, Rainer Men, Medway Stand all joining in, chanting, clapping, singing. It was brilliant. It was a throwback to the halcyon days of championship football. Um, and it's something that we don't see nearly enough these, these days. But if we can keep picking up points and keep picking up wins and keep playing well at Priestfield, then fingers crossed a lot more people will start returning on a regular basis. And you never know if we're in a promotion battle with six, ten games to go, then... We might get a few more bigger crowds because if you're not coming and that's your own choice, I've said that all through the season, you're missing out at the moment because we've been absolutely immaculate for the best part of two months at, at the Priestfield and I think our only defeat since the beginning of November on our own patch was, was West Ham about eight days ago. So can't complain at all. Um, but in terms of rumours, like we say, Steve Evans has said there's a couple that might be close and two names that have been popping up quite regularly today on social media through all of these uh, transfer pages. John Akinde from Lincoln City. Don't know whether it's a loan, a permanent or what, whether we're spending a fee, whether he's having his contract terminated. We don't know because he's got 18 months to run, but 
Um, that's one big name that's been linked. I know he's a southern boy by by trade. Um, spent a lot of his time at Barnet in League Two and in the, in the National League a few years ago, and scored a lot a lot of goals at that level. I think um, he's got the best part of a hundred goals in League Two for Barnet and Lincoln. Had a good season for them last year as they got promoted um, and was a big part of what they've done really well under the Cowleys before they left for Pastures New a couple of months ago. Um, and the other name is someone that's familiar to Jill's fans. He was on loan 2015-16 under Justin Edinburgh. That's Dominic Samuel. Um, again, we don't know whether it's loan, whether it's permanent, whether it's happening, whether it's not. Um, but again, it'd be a really good signing. I think uh, if I had to take one or the one or the other, I'd, I'd, I'd go for Dominic Samuel. I mean, it'd be wonderful if we could get both through the door, but that would give us six, five strikers, which would be probably too many, unless this Jordan Roberts, who can play anywhere down the left, Steve Evans said, um, gets used more as a winger. And whether we then implement maybe a Brandon Hanlon or a, a Mark Marshall or an Alex Jakubiak as a winger. Um, but yeah, Dominic Samuel, I think he scored eight in 25 games for us when we were very good for two thirds of that 2015-16 campaign under the late Justin Edinburgh and um, he went to Blackburn summer 2017 and he helped him get out of that division. So he knows that he can score goals in this league. The only thing is, obviously, he's had a, a massive knee problem. But he has been back all season playing majority, um, playing the majority of his games for Blackburn under-23s. Uh, I think he's got eight in eight. So doesn't matter what level he's at. He knows where the back of the net is. The goalposts don't move and all that. Um, so, yeah, that seems to be the two names. Um, I think there was another transfer in the no page that said Otis Khan was on the verge of joining from Mansfield, but looking through other tweets on that account, they had not got any right, so I wouldn't uh, read too much into that. But yeah, certainly be an interesting two or three weeks of what we got left. What are we today? It's the 13th of January, so yeah, about two, two and a half weeks before the January transfer window shut, so plenty of time still. Um, it'd be great if we could get one or two in prior to Oxford at the weekend, because that's going to be another massive test, and I think... If we can beat them, then I'll definitely start believing um, we've got an outside chance at the moment. If we can start beating them teams above us, I mean, we've, we've started to progress. Earlier on in the season, it was we're not getting anything off teams in the top half and we're playing well. Like the Ipswich 1 0 defeat, the Peterborough defeat at home 2 1, we were unlucky. We got spanked by Rotherham. We went to Oxford and got absolutely bashed, but then it's, it's improved a little bit. We've beaten Sunderland, we've uh, drawn with Fleetwood away, we've drawn with Pompey away, we've drawn with Pompey at home, we've drawn with Ipswich away got a good point at posh so the next step again to progress a little bit further is to start winning them games taking them chances when it's close and making sure that we get three points as opposed to one um, and if we can get a couple of bits of quality in to supplement what is already a decent squad then I think uh, yeah it could be a really interesting uh, three or four months um, 400 to 1 to get in the top two I think I saw on William Hill today Jules and 21, 20 to 1 to get promoted any which way so if you like a gamble maybe have a look I'm not saying for one minute it will happen but yeah if we can get a couple of bits and, uh, of quality in I think then it will set us up really nicely for the rest of the campaign anyway that is enough from me this evening I shall be back Thursday um, hopefully to talk about a couple of signings um, but obviously the main subject will be a match preview looking ahead to the visit of Carl Robinson's Oxford at the weekend if he's still in charge um, there was a rumour broke this morning that he's a uh, in the running to take over at Spanish outfit Malaga. And he is a big fan of Spanish football, I believe. He, he mentioned it in an interview a short while ago. So that's one to keep an eye on. We know it'll be a tough test. But like I say, be back Thursday to talk about that in depth. And until next time, up the Jills.